Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing great as always. So with today's announcement of the GFX 102, there was also several lenses that were announced as well. And there's one lens in particular that I found really, really interesting. And I'm really happy I was able to take out and use a lot during my test shooting with the GFX 102. This lens would be the 55 millimeter 1.7 GFX lens. And I must say, it is quite amazing and it's a really nice lens to use. So let's just jump into the review and let's like, yeah, just jump right into it. <laughs> so up until now, the only native 1.7 f-stop lens for the GFX system was the 80 millimeter 1.7, which I actually did a review of uh, last year, or two years ago now. And uh, that again is a, a beautiful lens, really, really nice, amazing bokeh on that. And so now the 55 millimeter is the second lens to come out for the GFX system that is a 1.7 uh, f-stop. And I'm sure it's something that many GFX shooters have been waiting for for a long time to get their hands on. So first off, let's look at the physical characteristics of this lens. Now, like many of you know, 55 millimeters on a medium format camera equals to about 44 millimeters on a 35 millimeter camera. Now this is just a tad bit wider than your average nifty 50 that you'll find out there that pretty much every photographer in the world owns. So it's a very common focal length and something I think all of us are very used to using because it is quite similar to what we see every day. So using this lens in the street or for portraits, it's actually quite easy to use to compose and things like that because we're so used to seeing this type of focal length every day in our lives. Now in the GFX system, there is already a 50 millimeter 3.5 lens and you'll notice there's quite a bit of a difference in size to these two lenses. The 3.5 is much smaller and lighter, but the 1.7, as you can see, is quite larger. And when you hold it, it's quite heavier. Saying that the lens is rather heavy, though, is not really, it's like, not like a really, really heavy lens. Like, I think my 1.4, 105mm lens from my Nikon is actually heavier. So it's, it's good size, but it's not too, too heavy. And I actually found it really nicely balanced on the GFX 102 body. So even though it is a, it is heavier than the, the 50mm, it's not like so heavy that it's a burden to use. It's a really nice weight, and I didn't mind it at all. Now another aspect of the lens on the internal of the lens, it has 11 rounded diaphragm blades. These are the blades that come together to create the hole that the light goes through. So this also controls the shape of the bokeh. So with having 11 rounded blades, you actually get very, very nice rounded bokeh. And looking at the images I took, I really like the bokeh in the images. It's nice and natural, it's very clean. It's not overly warped or overly weirdly shaped, so it's not distracting in the image. It's just really nice and it's there and it really helps my subject stand out from the background in some of the busier spots that we were shooting in Tokyo. Now this 55 millimeter lens also has quite a powerful internal DC motor that is supposed to help with the speed of the autofocus. You notice when you're using the lens and you actually have your hand on the lens when you're shooting, you can feel that motor moving in there and going around and trying to keep up with any kind of movement and fast action that I might be shooting with my subject. Now, lastly, as the title of this video probably will let you know, Fujifilm is now calling the 55 millimeter 1.7 the new standard. And this is because, now this is a little bit complicated and I'm not good with technical things like this, but please bear with me. Basically, the size of the GFX 55 millimeter lens is the same size as the diagonal across the GFX sensor, which is very nice. It's 102 megapixel sensors. And this lens seems to be the perfect size to be able to use this sensor in all of its glory. So, you know, how did I enjoy using the lens during my test shooting of the GFX 102? I have really enjoyed using the lens. I also had a 100 to 200, a 250 prime, and the 50 millimeter lens at my disposal whenever I wanted. But I found 90% of the time I was reaching for this 55 1.7. One thing is my personal style as I like shooting up wide open at 1.7. There was many times we were out shooting that we were in somewhere that was a little bit darker than ideal and these other lenses that I have don't shoot very uh, very open maybe 3.5 and things like that so I found that they were a little bit too dark for what I wanted to do but the 1.7 on the 55 was amazing it was really great really really bright and I was able to keep the ISO low, keep my shutter speed high, and just shoot wide open, and I was really enjoying it. Now, I really like the bokeh that this lens produces. It's very, very nice, but it's not overly bokeh. When I shot with the 80 millimeter 1.7, I noticed that the bokeh was getting into where the nose, the tip of the nose wasn't in focus anymore, but with the 55, you actually get a little bit more of the focus in on the nose and the eyes and a little bit of the hair. Both lenses are 1.7. If you've read up on how lenses work and things like that, you'll know that the increased focal length of the 80 millimeter lens will actually give you a bit more bokeh than the 1.7. So if you really, really want bokeh and you're looking at the two lenses and which one to get, well, the 80 millimeter at 1.7 will produce a little bit more bokeh than the 55 millimeter at 1.7. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the lenses that you might want to buy if you're getting into the GFX system. 
Now, one thing that did help me get really, really consistent and sharp images focused in on the eye that I wanted to be focused in on was the new autofocus algorithm that is available in the new GFX 102. Not gonna go too big into it right now, but just know that this GFX 102 has great eye autofocus. You can even pick which eye you wanna have it focused on. And so using this 1.7 where the depth of field is pretty severe, I was still able to be very, very confident when shooting and make sure that the focus is on the eye the whole time, even if both me and the subject are moving at the same time sometimes. This worked very, very well for photos and it worked very, very well for the video as well. Video I took of the people, like the portrait videos I took and things like that, everything worked out really, really well. It'd be interesting to see though how this lens, the 1.755, works on the older GFX models like the GFX 100 or the GFX 50 and things like that, that don't really have this new autofocus algorithm. And you know, it'd be interesting to see how difficult it would be to get proper eye focus on somebody consistently, especially when we're both kind of moving around and doing things like that in the busy street. Now, as I've mentioned, this lens does have an internal DC motor to help with the autofocus. The DC motor actually worked really, really well. I noticed when I was shooting portraits, I was banging on on the eyes the whole time, and the speed of the autofocus was always able to keep up with what I was doing. The lens never had a problem keeping up with the movement of my models and things like that. It was just a pleasure to use and very, very easy to shoot with. I did shoot a little bit of action with this lens as well, and I think it kept up quite well, but I would need to test it a little bit more if I wanted to take it out for like skateboarding, or freestyle motocross or BMX or something like that where the movement is very, very fast coming towards me and things like that. If you get the lens and you do use it for any kind of like that really fast action sports and stuff like that, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Maybe send me a link and show me some of the pictures you get. It'd be awesome. And, you know, I like street photography, so I took the chance to take this lens and the GFX 102 out into the street of Tokyo and walk around and just see what I can get. And I was quite happy with what I was able to get while I was out. The autofocus of the lens is more than fast enough for any street photography I wanted to do. The focus is smooth and quiet. The camera itself is quite quiet when taking pictures. I, people didn't notice me when I was like sniping shots of them and stuff like that. And it was just a fun experience being out on the street with this amazing camera, with this amazing lens. So I think GFX system in general is really well known for like its portraits and studio shooting, but thanks to lenses like this 55 1.7 and the new autofocus algorithm and things like that, taking this camera out in the street is also a great enjoyable thing. And I just had a blast. I had a really, really good time. I probably ended up walking like three or four hours for two days or so. And I even pulled it out when I was drinking with my friend at Tokyo Station, but you know, I was really careful nobody noticed what I was shooting with. So Fujifilm, don't worry, I was safe, I was careful. <laughs> In the end, it comes down to, this is a really nice lens. I think it's gonna be selling for like 2,300 American or something like that. So definitely not cheap, but it's definitely not like the most expensive lens I've ever seen. It's quite reasonable compared to, you know, other brands of similar quality and things like that. It's just a great all around lens. And I think it works really, really well with the new GFX. 102. It's an amazing combo and if I could get my hands on it, I would in an instant <laughs> and use it for, I could probably use that for 80% of my work when I'm out shooting. Good job uh, Fujifilm, awesome lens and I hope I can use it again in the future. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments about the lens that I wasn't able to cover in this video, hit me up down below. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. And yeah, if you've gotten this far in the video, please subscribe and I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers and thanks.